Hey, After Buzzers, I'm Kylie Hodges. Don't go anywhere because we are doing After Buzz TV Spotlight on with Jonah Shaw. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Kylie Hodges, and I am very excited today to bring you a special edition of After Buzz TV Spotlight on. You may have seen her on AMC's Halt and Catch Fire, but 2016 is going to be a big year for her. I predict it. I've said it now. Soon enough, you won't be able to get enough of her. I'll stop rambling. Everybody, please give a very warm welcome to actor Jonah Shaw. Hi, Jonah. <laughs> Hi, Kylie. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. I'm so excited to interview you because this is my first time interviewing somebody who I know <laughs> Side of the internet. It's a very small world. Yes, it is a small world. So we met through mutual friends years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been Facebook friends. It's been very exciting for me to see your acting career blossom. And Thank now you so much. you're at the point where I'm interviewing you. So good for you. And I'm glad that you're the one interviewing me. So <laughs> Thank you. Really well. Thank you. So I can fangirl over somebody I already know. This is very exciting. <laughs> so I feel like I maybe know the answer to some of these questions, but I want all the viewers to get to know you a little better. Okay. So I'm just going to do a 10 quick question, rapid fire kind of thing just shoot out whatever answer first comes to mind okay okay i'll apologize in advance then in perfect case I say <laughs> the raunchier the more inappropriate the more interesting for the internet okay okay first question what's your favorite food scallop sushi wow <laughs> most elaborate answer second favorite drink water <laughs> okay that's mine too okay it's it's a little boring but it's so necessary it is Love and honestly HGO. whenever somebody says diet coke i die a little inside because <laughs> i know that they're eliminating years off their life by giving that answer uh last person you sent a text to uh one of my best friends from college hmm. yeah uh dirty socks or dirty underwear i know both Really? Wait, wait. I mean, Do like, I have, like, which, which is, one? well, wh however you want to answer that. I was thinking whatever's worse to you, but oh, also maybe okay. do you like them both? <laughs> um... Well, I usually I usually wear mismatched socks. Interesting. Um, but I guess dirty underwear is worse. I my brother used to uh, growing up, he would change his underwear like four times every night. At night, <laughs> like he would wake up yeah. in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and put on new underwear. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do appreciate his cleanliness. <laughs> However, your poor mom was probably doing a lot of laundry. That she was. So She's a bless great woman. her heart for being a patient woman with all that dirty underwear. Uh, what is your biggest pet peeve? Ah, uh, I would say when people are not direct, when they kind of tiptoe around things, I'm like, just give it to me straight. Like I'm a very straightforward person, and I appreciate that in other people. I appreciate that too. Cutting mm -hmm. the bullshit. Yes, exactly. What is a current song you can't get out of your head? That Coldplay song about getting high and drinking. Not that I can do. <laughs> not something. I just think it's catchy. Yeah, the one all, with Beyonce. All Coldplay songs have that song or that sound where you just go, I don't know what it's called, but you know that Coldplay song. Yes, exactly. They just have that sound. I got you. I get it. So that's been stuck in my head lately. You got Beyonce in there though. That's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, describe your perfect Sunday in five words. Flag football at the beach. Ooh! <laughs> I just had That's to count that one. That's a good one. Wait, so in flag football, you don't tackle people. You pull their flag. Correct. I don't want to get hurt. So, yes, and it's you're playing contact it, You're playing it in the sand? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Do you have, like, insane calf muscles? Uh, I do have, you know, I, I dated a guy once that said I had nice thunder thighs. Oh! I don't know! <laughs> I, okay. I think he meant it as a compliment, but I do have strong legs. I can piggyback ride anyone up to 330 pounds. Seriously? Yes. Wow. So wait. So I guess I do have strong legs or something. Have you piggybacked somebody at 331? And if so, what happened? <laughs> well, 330 was the combination of two guys on my back. Oh my God. So I haven't attempted 331, but I've won bets with 330 and below. Interesting. So now you make me want to try 331. Yeah, <laughs> if anybody watching weighs a little over 330 pounds, please uh, tweet at Jonah. She wants to give you a piggyback <laughs> ride. I want to test my strength. I wonder what the Guinness Book of World Records is for that. I have you never looked that up. look into this. I feel like this could be a new, <laughs> if, if acting, you give up on it, that could be a Maybe new career choice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, all right. What is your, who's your celebrity crush? Oh, um, that's a good question. Chris Evans is cool. really cute. I did um, a movie with him recently that'll be coming out next year. And he's playing a dad, and 
He's just always really attractive. Yeah, you always. can't you can't go wrong there. That was a good choice. Uh, what's your favorite color? Maroon. Hmm. Yeah. And last question: What's one thing you would bring with you to a deserted island? Uh, a TV. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I could keep myself entertained and watch all the things that I want to catch up on. I hope you can find power to plug it in. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, that might not work very well. Then. That's okay. <laughs> One time I asked somebody that question and their answer was another person. And I was like, I don't know how far that would get you. But at least you have somebody to talk to. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your acting career. Sure. Tell me from the beginning, what got you into being an actress? Sure. So when I was in middle school, I was forced to take a drama class. Forced? Yeah, I didn't want to. Okay. <laughs> I was very shy, actually. Okay. Um, I was weird, but shy at the same time. It was a weird combination overall. And I had to take like an arts elective, and essentially I was forced to take a drama class. And I was like, oh. But I actually ended up loving it. We had a class play called Rappin' Stiltskin, which was the rapping version of Rumple Stiltskin. So it was definitely a comedy. And what I realized is, like, I loved making people laugh. Uh, it was awesome. So I kind of got hooked, and that's when I got bit by the bug. So I started doing, like, plays in school. Um, in high school, I was auditioning for musicals. And my mom is a great singer. Uh, she's not a singer by trade, but it's just something she's good at. And I was like, oh, help me with, please help me with this audition song. I was trying to sing um, Cats, and that was difficult. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so she was like, Jonah, I'm busy. Like, Stop bothering me. I was like, Mom, please, you're a great singer. Um, and finally she was like, Jonah, okay, I'm going to be honest. Your singing's more painful to listen to than you're crying, all right? So I don't even know why you're trying. And then I went to the audition. <laughs> Wait, your and... own mother said that. That's amazing. You know, I appreciate directness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so singing wasn't my thing. So that's when I started getting more into like the on-camera side and acting and not singing. You know, your mom <laughs> probably saved you like years of delusion okay. by saying that. There you that. go. There you go. <laughs> Bless her heart. You are. Thank so you. So if I want to make people cry, I could sing. <laughs> So have you ever considered or have you ever tried stand-up comedy? It's something I've considered, but it uh, I've never actually tried it before. I love comedy, yeah. but I prefer scripted comedy. I love, um, there's just so many genius comedy writers and so much great comedy on TV. And I kind of would rather uh, speak their words because they're so brilliant. Uh, yeah, and right now we're in a comedy boom, so yes. you're pretty lucky because everybody wants a funny person. <laughs> <laughs> you're in demand. Yay! Or for... so I hear. <laughs> well, for me, I think my one of my biggest strengths is I don't get embarrassed very easily. Mm. So I um, things that would embarrass other people, I'm like, F it. Like, I'll try it. Yeah, yeah. So, good for you. Yeah, that's a strength of mine, I guess. <laughs> that's a good thing to teach to people, too. Like, quit being embarrassed of yourself because you're not going to get anywhere if you Right, don't try and it. you just got to laugh at yourself mm -hmm. and just have fun. So, uh, you started out, you've been on, you know, Victorious on Nickelodeon, <laughs> you've been on the Kroll Show, you've been on Bones. Tell me about how those first bigger experiences felt. I, I remember early on, I'd get really nervous. I'm like, oh, don't mess up your lines. And um, there, and it, it, what I loved was everyone was so like supportive and collaborative. And I've been really lucky that I've never actually worked on a bad set before. Like even when things were tense and we were going late into the um, early hours of the morning and everyone was, I could tell they were stressed about the time, everyone was still like, working as a team. And I think that's what I love is like being part of a collaboration and being on a team. And that's what it feels like being on set. So it's, uh, it's been really rewarding being able to work with a lot of different types of directors and productions. So I think for me, what, what it's allowed me to do is just be a lot more free and take risks on sets now. And I feel like I have the freedom to do that, which is exciting. I want to backtrack a little bit. Did mm -hmm. you study, did you go to college? And if so, did you study acting or was acting just a hobby that grew into a career? Great question. So I, so I started acting when I was pretty young, mm -hmm. um, you know, starting at age 12 in class plays kind mm -hmm. of thing. And then, so from then on, uh, like 
age 16, I was like, I really want to be an actor. And I, um, I just didn't really know how to do that. Like I was taking acting classes, but I decided to study the business side of entertainment in college. So I went to USC. So why not? <laughs> so I'm a Trojan fan. And so I studied, uh, I did a joint degree with business and cinematic arts and then a theater minor. Wow. So it Smart. was really, yeah, I was really learning the business side and working on the business side that like opened up so many, oh, ah, because I was really clueless before. <laughs> really I feel like clueless. everybody is. You watch television and you, you, as much as people say they don't believe in the Hollywood narrative, we've all drank the Kool-Aid. Even the people working in the industry have drank the Kool-Aid and are still surprised by what's happening around them. Right? Do you feel like that has paid off for you in the long run as an actor? You've been able to make a little smarter choices than maybe fellow actors who didn't have that background? Absolutely. So I I think that so much of this industry is understanding the business side and being business savvy. And like in college, it's not something, you know, I loved my USC experience, but I feel like that's something that a lot of people really wanted and didn't have is like, how do you build relationships with people you want to work with? Um, a lot of times people don't like the word networking and I it's a weird word for me as well because it implies like using someone or something like that and that's not how I view it I'm like I love making friends and it's awesome when you get to collaborate and work with people that you're friends with you know I have a few a couple projects that I'm um, it's in the mix some things that I might be working on soon and I get to do it with friends that I've known for years so I I love that side now like it's great so I, it's it's like focusing on the craft, but also focusing on being a savvy business person. And I think that's really helped me. That's great. Tell me a little bit about your experience on AMC's Halt and Catch Fire. Sure. So I come in at season three, so it just premiered. Um, and I think it's one of the best rated shows, but really underrated. Um, I wish it was more popular because it's such a great show and I play this very spunky character named Julie Yang so she's um, one of the new coders on uh, the mutiny team and she's the first female that mutiny's brought on and so she really has to hold her own with all the boys uh, since this is set in the 1980s there weren't many female coders so I get to do a lot of things that are pretty ridiculous out there and with my character, you never know what's going to happen. Ooh. So she doesn't take a lot of shit, but she gives a lot of shit. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> like a fun people. character to play. Oh, so fun. It's it's one of the most fun roles I've ever played. So. And was I'm this excited. your longest experience on a TV series? Yes. Um, How did that I, feel? Yeah, I shot about half the season, and it was just great because each time I would come back to shoot, it's like returning back home you know and me and the other coders like we would play board games in our trailers we would, <laughs> we have like an ongoing Facebook messenger chat thing that's going like 24 7 and people are always posting like funny gifts and memes and videos and like I was really grateful to that they like welcomed me so much and I was like the first girl in their group <laughs> mm. and yeah it's it's been amazing like we've been shooting in it uh, we were shooting in Atlanta and we would like get together like as if being on set all day wasn't enough um so yeah it was an amazing experience to be part of that that's awesome good for you yeah you've got a lot of other exciting projects coming up you have a film coming out in october keeping up with the joneses yes tell me a little bit about that sure it's a hilarious action comedy so it stars zach galifianakis isla uh, fisher gal gadot john ham like a amazing cast so it's about a suburban couple that gets kind of entangled into this international espionage thing going on with their neighbors played by a gal and John so I was really fortunate enough to have scenes with um, Zach and John and I remember um, one of the scenes we were shooting in between takes John and Zach had a very competitive Scrabble game going like in between <laughs> takes like as soon as they did like the, the, the camera was off and it was time to relax instead of relaxing they'd go back into their Scrabble game <laughs> 
That's amazing. So that was fun to watch. <laughs> I can't wait until I have found the day where I can have a job with an ongoing Scrabble game. Right? That's like, I feel like that means you've made it. If somebody's going to let you play Scrabble while working, then you're, you've gotten somewhere. Yeah, as a board game dork, <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge board game dork. I have like probably 70 board games at home. Like board games plus acting. What could be better? Plus John Hamm. Oh, yes. What more could a girl ask That's for? That's true. A fellow St. Louis man. I love John. Oh, interesting. So you're Saint, from St. Louis and so is he. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, did you guys bond over your love of um, that processed cheese that St. Louis loves so much? Pro Provo? Pro I don't know this. Wait, really? No, oh, is this no. new? What is it called? No, it's like I mean, white. I mean, I love cheese. It's white... Oh, geez. Now I can't remember. I recently was researching this because I'm going to a wedding in St. Louis. Oh, my friend okay. Is there. I feel like it's called Provo. And it's but not Provolone. Correct. Different. It's basically like the white version of Velveeta. Oh, I want to try this out. Yeah, I don't... Oh, man. If Wait, is our engineer telling us about this? <laughs> Marissa? Provel, thank you. Provel. Provel. It sounds yes. fancy. I want to try it. It's definitely the opposite of fancy. <laughs> it's it's I feel like it's the poor man's Velveeta, but it's like a staple in St. Louis. Okay, what about toasted ravioli? Is that a... Ooh, yes. Okay. If you've I've never had toasted ravioli, it's, it's phenomenal. Good. It's good. Mm -hmm. And they I have spent... like Ted Drew's ice cream. There's yeah. a lot of Yeah. Oh man, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so did your love of St. Louis bring you closer to John Hamm? Tell me more about your interaction with John Hamm. I mean, these are big names. Yeah. Did you did you feel like because you had something in common with him, it it kind of uh, eliminated the nerves of walking on the set with all these bigger names or how did you feel about this? I think so. It's like we came from the same city and so we did talk about a little and in St. Louis I didn't know it was just a St. Louis thing. Like, anytime you meet a person from St. Louis, you ask them, oh, what high school did you go to? So oh, yeah. I thought that that's what everyone did when you brought up a hometown. But nope, that's primarily a St. Louis thing. So we did that as well. So I think our high schools were about 20 minutes apart. Oh, man. And, like, um, yeah, so it was interesting. And the thing about John is he's so charming and nice to everyone. Um, and we did like a selfie after um, on my last day of shooting and he was just like, yeah, let's do a selfie. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thanks. That's wonderful. <laughs> I love hearing nice stories about big names. I think, I think the entertainment industry needs more of that. Yes. Um, all right. I've been excited to ask you about this. Big news two days ago. Mm -hmm. Variety revealed that you are in the next Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. This is very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to join the cast. And uh, unfortunately, I can't say anything about the plot or my character. But I can say that I'm really excited to be um, shooting Spider-Man. <laughs> That's so cool. So it looks like they're doing a reboot. There's no more Andrew Garfield. We've got Tom Holland playing mm -hmm. uh, uh, Peter Parker. Yep. Um, Zendaya as Mary Jane? Is that a rumor? Is that confirmed? I, I cannot confirm nor deny. We've got Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I love Iron Man. I think this is going to be a great movie. I can't wait to see you in it. I'm excited. I wish I could ask you more questions. But <laughs> and I wish I could answer more like questions. That's it. And, uh, all right, I want to get a little serious for a second. Okay. I feel like Oscar So White is going to be haunting us forever. <laughs> uh, and and now is such a big time with with uh, the, the place of women and minorities in the entertainment industry. And as an actress who's Chinese-American, mm -hmm. and you're just now really getting your foot in this industry as a, as a prominent uh, career, how do you feel about the, is this industry still white male centric to you or can you feel a shift? What's your perspective on all this? Sure, so I remember a couple years ago I was at a panel and I think Asian Americans that we were, I think it was only 50% re represented, meaning there's twice the percentage of Asian Americans in the U.S. that then are reflected on TV. So that was really unfortunate. And I think there has been a shift, and I think it's been great that people are so passionate um, about being very vocal, about seeing more minorities in TV, more um, just diversity overall. So I have seen a shift in that. Um, like during pilot season, there were so many roles and my friends in the industry on the other side, you know, they were saying, you know, we can't, we can't go white on this role. We, we, we have to go ethnic. And I was like, internally, I was like, yes. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> right. So I You're think... like over here. <laughs> like, I, I'm ethnic. <laughs> so 
So I do see that shift. Now, is it where I would like to see it? Not quite, because there's still more Asians um, with minority roles. A lot of them are still in supporting roles as opposed to the lead role. So that is something that I would love to see continue is ethnic uh, minorities in larger roles um, but it is becoming a lot more inclusive and I do appreciate seeing that but it's interesting even with the when Variety um, leaked the Spider-Man announcement that I just I briefly saw some threads and like it so much of it was focused on me being Asian you know and some people saying oh I guess they just wanted to diversify the cast so they wanted to add another Asian and I saw a lot of comments like that and I was like well, I mean, maybe that was part of it, but why does that have to be the sole reason? Right. You know, I, I can't guess as to exactly why I was cast. Yeah. Um, but it, it's interesting that it becomes so much about the race. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, ideally in the future, I'd love to see just more of like a, just colorblind casting in general. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel like um, you've ever received horrible advice? And if so, <laughs> what was the worst advice you've Ooh. ever received? That's a great question. I've gotten all sorts of advice. Yeah, people love giving advice in Hollywood. <laughs> Whether or not it's good is is debatable. Um, I do. Well, my dad. <laughs> okay, I love my parents. They're wonderful and they're very supportive. Uh, they were just very protective Asian parents. And my dad, I just remember him being like, you know, you should be like, a lawyer because you like to argue Jonah and if you and plus you're Asian if if you were white like maybe you could be an actor but you're Asian and and there's only Lucy Liu this was when I was younger there's only oh god <laughs> yeah we've come a long way <laughs> and so now like it's great that so many um networks and producers are embracing ethnic uh, diversity and casting now but yeah had I taken my dad's advice I guess <laughs> I would be a lawyer and there would only be Lucy Liu right <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there would always be Lucy Liu. But yeah, I'm so glad that there's so many uh, incredible Asian actors that have come on the scene the last few years. So yeah, so I'm glad that I love my dad, but I'm glad that in some ways I was kind of a rebel in terms of not listening to most of the things that he suggested. What is the best <laughs> advice you've ever received? Hmm. A long time ago... Um, I, when I was in, I remember sitting down um, with a teacher of mine and I was doing so many things, like so many things. I was, I was like, well, maybe I want to be an actor. And I was also like in the process of starting this online dating site. And I was thinking about being a professional poker player <laughs> um, and like wow. starting my own, my own business. And what was the fifth thing? Um, I'll, going into management consulting like in the business business the uh corporate world Uh so i was like this uh i was dabbling in all these things and he was like jonah like what you need to do is put all your eggs in one basket so more eggs in one basket and what i realized was i was doing i was putting two feet in five different directions because i was so terrified of failing Mm -hmm. that i was like well if i try like five things what are the chances that i'll like fail at all five of them actually pretty likely (laughs) given people are so passionate and focused on one or two things and so that was the moment where i kind of cut off cut out like you cut out the, poker? Yeah, pretty much. I did play in a friendly uh, home game last night, <laughs> but I only play like like twice a year and at like That's a charity nice. tournament or two. But I am, no longer have aspirations to travel the world playing poker. <laughs> that can be a retirement game. Like there some you go. people retire and like you know they're the Walmart greeters handing the stickers out to the little kids. Do they even do that anymore? I don't know. I think but they like do. you could retire and just play poker occasionally, right? That and sounds like, like a sweet retirement gig, right? And then at the uh, like the World Series of Poker, there's usually like a few actors, yeah, like, right? I think um, either Ben Affleck or Matt Damon or maybe both of them they've played and. <laughs> that fun. sounds. I was gonna say if you're gonna be playing poker, do it with other celebs. That'll just get that's your true. name in the mix with all the that's other bigger That's true. People. That's true. And the next thing you know, you'll be like, you know, Matt Damon's poker partner. I actually <laughs> don't know how poker works at all. Do you have partners? Not usually. Okay. <laughs> usually that's not allowed. Yeah, don't take my advice then. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. Where do you see yourself in five years? Great question. I, I, my 
uh, I feel most confident in comedy and because I love making people laugh, I would say a series regular on a television comedy. Like I have so many favorite TV shows right now, drama and comedy. And so it would be great to be on a show in the vein of like a Fresh Off the Boat, um, Silicon Valley, uh, Jane the Virgin, My Crazy Ex, Girlfriend, all like those type of shows. Like I love watching them. So it'd be great to be a series regular on a show like that. Do you have a particular actor or director that is your dream person to work with? I actually got to, uh, one of my dream directors I got to work with on Gifted. It was actually Mark Webb. So Mark Webb directed um, 500 Days of Summer, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. And that movie helped me get over a boyfriend that cheated on me. Oh. So, yeah. But, you know, that movie, like, did so much in terms of oh. helping me, like, rebound and I loved it so much and I was like someday I want to work with Mark Webb and then I was so <laughs> grateful and so lucky to be able to work with him on a film project so it's coming out next uh, April and what's it yeah. called it's called gifted so that's Fantastic. the one with uh, Chris Evans and Octavia Spencer so I got to work with him and then I would love to work with in the future Edward Norton because I think that he is so friggin talented and just a genius did you tell Mark Webb about how his movie helped you get over a breakup? Oh my gosh, I don't think I did. Let's, let's get him. We've got him on speakerphone right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> Mark, <Kidding>. thank you. <laughs> I might still be heartbroken to this day if it weren't for you. Oh, that movie, though, I feel like everybody can resonate with, with yes. 500 Days of Summer. That is the movie to pop in and eat a box of chocolate and <laughs> drink a glass of wine and just be like, you know what? It's going to be okay. Yes. Gets better. I agree. Because <laughs> Joseph it. Gordon-Levitt proved. Oh, proved yeah. so. <laughs> Such a great cast, too. Jonah, thank you so much thank for coming you, to Kylie. talk with me. I feel like this is one of those interviews that a few years from now, we'll watch it back and be like, I knew her when. <laughs> Thank so, you, Kylie. to everybody watching, please tell them where they can follow you on social media. Sure. So on Twitter, it's Jonah Shao, J-O-N-A-X-I-A-O. And that's the same for Facebook and Instagram. Fantastic. And uh, Keeping Up with the Joneses premieres October... 17th. 17th. Everybody, go see it. We think. 17th. Google it. <laughs> Again, Jonah, thank you so much. Thank and you, you can Kylie. Follow me on Twitter at the Kylie Hodges or Instagram at Kylie Hodges. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.